the hybrid, the HTV one that we built at the R&D Center, is just as sophisticated as any of the hybrids being built in 2010. It was, it was the engine, the motor, the transmission, the vehicle was microprocessor controlled. It was in the early days of the microprocessors, but there were people at the R&D Center that knew how to build microprocessors from the, from the components. If we change the strategy that we use to, to de determine how much of the power was coming from the motor, how much was coming from the engine, we would change that to optimize the efficiency. Somebody would burn a new chip overnight, and when we tested it the next morning, we would have the new, have the new strategy. I then uh, ended up working at the Aerospace Corporation in Los Angeles and worked on uh, uh, improving fuel economy of vehicles. And one of the approaches to improve fuel economy, as you well know now, is hybrid, hybrid vehicles. So I started to work on hybrid vehicles at the Aerospace Corporation. And uh, the DOE had a competition for uh, hybrid vehicles, and GE won the competition for the vehicles at the R&D Center. So then I left the Aerospace Corporation and went went to work for GE in, uh, in Schenectady. The project started in 1978 and it finished in 1982. And uh, that was how I got to I got to GE. And all my work at GE was involved with hybrid vehicles, batteries for hybrid vehicles, simulation on the computer of hybrid vehicles. Bob, Bob King was the was a key a key person on the on the H, HTV one. I would say that Bob King and I were probably the the two the two key ones. And Gene Rowland, who was also at he was the manager. He was the overall manager. For, he was a very experienced manager at the R&D Center, and we worked with the with the Jet Propulsion Lab from California, but it's what's called a parallel hybrid, which means that the, the motor and the engine are on the same shaft. And that car worked so well that when people were riding in the car, they could not tell whether the engine was driving the car, the motor was driving the car, or the combination of the two. The other thing that is very, was very modern about it, even though it was built in 20 years ago, was that it was what we now call plug-in hybrid, which means that we had a battery that was sufficiently big that you could drive the vehicle about 30 miles without, without using the engine hardly at all. And then at night, when you, when you come back, went back to the garage, you wanted to have the battery empty, and you plugged it into the wall and recharged the battery for the next, the next day. We didn't call it a plug-in hybrid, but people now, in this in 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 this time, they refer to such a vehicle as a plug-in hybrid. And on the EPA driving cycle, that car would get 300 miles per gallon as a as a hybrid, and it got better, maybe 15 or 20 percent better fuel economy on the highway than a comparable. A gasoline gasoline car so in in every respect that car was as complicated and as efficient as far as energy electrical energy use and fuel economy as any of the hybrids now being built which I think is pretty is pretty amazing now the battery we used the lead acid at that time the only batteries available for use in vehicles were either lead acid or nickel cadmium. And we used, we used a, a, a lead acid battery, a special lead acid battery built by the Johnson Controls Battery Company. Unfortunately, the life of the battery was so short that by the time we had the vehicle all tested and had worked out all the bugs in the control system, the battery was shot. So when the car was actually tested by Department of Energy, 
they use NICAD batteries. But it was, it was a parallel plug-in hybrid, four doors, and there was no compromise in the, in the interior space or even in the trunk space. I think it was a remarkable car for 20, 20 years ago. That picture is, was taken in front of the R&D Center when on the day in which GE unveiled the car to the, depart, to the people at the Department of Energy. And they actually, it was a winter day as I recall, they actually drove the car around the roads on, uh, around the R&D Center. It worked very well. In a sense, you, uh, GE's history in commercializing electric vehicles or hybrid vehicles, in my opinion, is not a very happy one because they developed, the hybrid, Bob King developed the hybrid bus, which is now there's selling them by the hundreds to New York City, but it wasn't GE that commercialized it. It was a company in, uh, in Binghamton, uh, BAE, which commercialized the vehicle. Uh, but the, des the design, the actual proof of concept was done, was done by GE. GE never followed up on the hybrid vehicle because remember after right after the vehicle was IRC project was done Ronald Reagan became president and he was not very interested in uh, in electric vehicles or hybrid vehicles so from the early from the early 1980s until the early 1990s the, the U.S. government and the U.S. auto industry had no interest in hybrid vehicles. But I continued to work on, on hybrid vehicles and electric vehicles continuously since, since I, when I started in about 1975 up to this, up to this day.